All right, let's get right into it. We're talking about Ceph today, and specifically, the huge debate raging in the home lab community about what kind of hardware you actually need to run it. It's this, this power struggle between the enterprise purists and the DIY crowd, and honestly, if you're new to this, it can be super confusing. And that really boils down to this one central question. You've been there, right? You're reading a guide, your eyes are getting wider, and you can practically hear your wallet screaming in agony. Do you really need to build a mini data center with a power bill to match just to get your feet wet? Or is there a more sane way to do this? You know, to really get why people argue so passionately about this, you got to understand what Ceph means in the home lab world. It's not just another project. It's like a final boss. It's seen as the ultimate badge of honor, a sign that you've really leveled up your game. Okay, so let's start with chapter one, the purist's way. This is the official rule book, the kind of advice you'll find all over the forums from the hardcore storage pros. And boy, what a list it is. This is the dream killer right here. We're talking the whole nine yards. ECC RAM for data integrity. Enterprise NVMe drives with power loss protection. 10 gigabit networking at the bare minimum. And of course, pricey server grade everything. It's basically a small, loud, and incredibly power hungry beast. But this is where things get interesting because there's a rebellion brewing. A whole community of folks are looking at that list and saying, yeah, no, we're gonna do it our way. They're bending the rules, and sometimes they're breaking them completely. And this quote from a user just hits the nail on the head, doesn't it? It perfectly captures that feeling of, wait a second, a thousand watts just for storage? Am I the crazy one here? And let me just say, no, you are absolutely not crazy for thinking that. Because here's the reality, the dirty little secret. People are doing it. They're building perfectly functional Ceph clusters on hardware that would make a purist head spin. We're talking consumer drives, no ECC RAM, running on a tiny fraction of the power. And for learning, for running some VMs, it just plain works. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty. We're gonna break this down component by component and separate the dogma from what's actually practical for a home lab. Let's figure out what really matters. First up, the big one, SSDs. The entire argument pretty much boils down to one little acronym, PLP, or Power Loss Protection. Think of it like a tiny, built-in battery on an enterprise drive. If the power cuts out, it has just enough juice to finish writing whatever it was doing. That's a huge deal for data safety, which is why its impact is so high. Your normal consumer drive doesn't have that. It's cheaper, for sure, but you're making a trade-off. And here's where that trade-off can really bite you. The Ceph monitors, or MONs, are like the air traffic controllers for the whole cluster. They are constantly, and I mean constantly, scribbling little notes to keep track of everything. A regular consumer SSD just isn't built for that kind of nonstop, tiny write torture. It can wear them out, and worse, it can bring the performance of your entire cluster grinding to a halt. Okay, next up, networking. The rulebook says 10 gigabit or go home, period. But for a home lab where you're probably not pushing petabytes of data around 24 seven, is it really a deal breaker from day one? Well, the truth is, in most of these budget builds, your drives are going to be the slow part long before your network is. It's kind of like putting regular street tires on a Formula One car. The engine can't go any faster than the grip will allow. So yeah, you can absolutely get started and learn on a one gigabit network. You just have to be realistic about your performance expectations. Now, all this DIY thinking has led to this really cool trend, building Ceph clusters out of these tiny, low-power mini PCs. They're awesome. They save space, they're quiet, they sip electricity, but there's a catch. A very physical, very annoying catch. And here it is. It's literally a size problem. Your standard consumer M2 drive is a 2280 form factor. That means it's 80 millimeters long and it fits perfectly inside most mini PCs. But a lot of those beefy enterprise drives, the ones with that critical PLP feature, they're often 22110s. That's 110 millimeters long. They're just too big for the slot. It's a classic square peg in a round hole problem. And you can just feel the sheer frustration in this quote, can't you? You're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to use the recommended hardware, but it physically won't fit into the cool, efficient little machine you want to use. It is absolutely maddening. So after all these conflicts and compromises, where does this leave us? Well, it brings us to a much healthier, more practical way of looking at things. It's your lab, so it should be your build and your rules. Let's boil all that community wisdom down into a simple game plan. If you have to prioritize your budget, 
Here's how to do it. Step one, put your money into at least one good PLP-enabled SSD per node, just for those demanding mods. That is the single biggest bang for your buck. Everything else, the 10 gig network, the ECC RAM, the big server CPUs, they're great to have. Fantastic upgrades for later, but they are not deal breakers for just getting started. And that is really the core takeaway here. This whole self-power struggle, it isn't actually about having the absolute best specs. It's about being honest about what you need and matching your hardware to your actual goals. You're trying to learn and tinker, not build a competitor to Amazon Web Services in your basement. So I'll leave you with this final thought. You're not building Google Cloud. You're building your lab, a place to experiment, a place to fail, and a place to create something that works for you. So the only question left to ask is, what will you build?